Hi, this is Fran with Stampendous, and I'm continuing my fabulous Friday fun watercolor series. This is 122, and we're going to jump right in with our fun little thankful kitties here. And I wanted to just show you a couple of ideas that with these colors and the little package, you can make a really nice birthday card or any kind of a little friendship or everyday card with these little characters using the ice cream and the, uh, the little package. And I thought it was real fun. On this one, we did that little free flow of color behind with the blue and purple. And on this one, I just did the little vignette. But if it looks a little bit light, you could add a little bit more color. Or I'm going to add just a frame here and kind of follow along the curvy edges of it here to kind of just set off that edge. And you can see the fun little backdrop I made here, just with stripes of different colors. And a simple layout like that um, could just make a really fun uh, birthday card. Next, I wanted to show you how to use the little um, sign that the kitty's holding. And I'll stamp a combination of them here so you see how it comes together. So by making all of the little things in their hands being a separate stamp, it works best to stamp the little sign first. I did a little cutout on sticky notes, and I want to make sure it's going the same way here. So on this one you can see it sort of went a really long tummy. I'm going to overlap it a little bit more. Okay, that looks a little bit better. And then the set has all sorts of different words that will all fit in that little space. So you can see how I used that combination to create the uh, friend, friends over here. And we'll just do some quick painting on this one. You could draw a few more lines if you wanted to extend it further down to that bottom edge but cutting it out was kind of fun so this one has fall colors and you might want to try this one in some more winter colors and again just having that bit of gray with the blues is going to give you a whole different uh, color scheme there that's fun and then for this one I wanted to try another fun backdrop of colors here. And we've done some similar things, but I wanted to try this now in some fall colors. So I've taken a light color crayon and we're just going to do some crazy uh, patterning here with the crayon. And I thought it would be fun to maybe have this little guy off to the side and just all this crazy color. So let's try it this way. I'm going to start with some lighter colors out here and there. And on this one, I want to get a lot of dark colors behind where I'm going to place my kitty. 
So we'll start with that, but then we'll add some deeper colors. I'm going to move my palette so that I can access the reds and purples, but also uh, my browns are over here on this side. So we'll just fast forward this and it'll be different but fun combination each time. There's a fun little backdrop of, of just the colors themselves make it fun and playful. So let's stamp this little combination here. And this little lantern can just connect to one of the little branches. So now we've stamped this combination and we'll reference uh, the little bunnies here and um, I did a lot more detail on these that was scheduled for this week and so you can see we did these last week but starting with this one let's first do this blue gray sky so I've got my phthalo blue and I still have some of the gray black that I had uh, brought down to this part of the palette bit more of the gray and lighten it with a bit more water okay so I'm just going to do a simple little vignette kind of coming around this area and I'm intentionally leaving it open around the lantern I'll soften those edges okay now I'll turn it around to where I have my pre-mixed browns so if I can lift with a rather dry brush and get a soft wash of color, I'll first lay in just some areas of that lightest color. I need a little bit darker blue down here. I'm not doing the colors as dark as you would normally have enough to see the, the light, but a darker shade will kind of set it off here, okay. Now I'm going to go a shade light, uh, darker brown. A bit darker. But I need a rather dry brush to hold the detail. And that's key to the detail that you're seeing on the little bunnies. Uh, do each layer and let it dry and then come back and add a little bit more detail of the next darkest shade of color. As long as this uh, blue of the sky has dried enough, then I'm safe to come in with my yellow. And I want a rather dry brush. A drier brush will allow me to do these little rays of light kind of like we did on the star. And I'm gonna add a little touch of yellow here and there. On the little bunnies, you can see just that little touch of pink in the ears, add a nice little detail of color. 
And I'm going to add just a little bit on the squirrel. I feel like it's too much yellow, you can lift a little bit of it away. another variation when, where I did a much darker sky and used the little star and the moon up above. Last week briefly I showed you this backdrop and I wanted to show you how I did it. So I used the fine line masking fluid pen and you reveal this uh, delicate little wire up here which lets you do really fine detail and I've done it across most of this card already, and I'll do a few more, knowing that it is kind of hard to see, but you get a nice little bead of the fluid coming out from this really fine tip, and I'm doing little crisscross, uh, like snowflakes, plus some little dots in the middle, and the section of it that I did earlier um, has had time to dry and then I'll show you to put this away you might check that the little wire is clean and then it threads right back in it's kind of like threading a needle here you've got to see get it started and then it slides all the way in and screw it down tight and that will keep it uh, fluid for you for the next time so I will just work on this other area over here and this has had time now to dry. It feels just a little bit tacky like rubber cement would perhaps, but it's got all of that detail. So I've turned it around. This area is still wet, but I will show you on this now dry area how we come in with a nice wash of our Thalo Blue and I'm graying it back a little bit with uh, the black blend there. And then I will, with a rather wet brush, just kind of go over all of these areas. I don't want it perfectly even. It's okay to make it interesting kind of shades of color here. Okay, I'm going to stop there for now, but you can see the idea. And once this has dried, then I simply can rub away all of the little bit of um, the masking fluid, revealing uh, the white there in contrast. And this is a nice way to be able to make a color coordinated backdrop for even your tiny little vignette like that. So with this one, I stamped our little puppy dog here uh, with his package, and I did sort of a wild background that I wasn't sure I was that crazy about. In fact, it looked sort of like hideous wallpaper <laughs> back there. But I wanted you uh, to show you a simple uh, option here, and I just did a wavy line here, kind of following the edge of my paper want it to look hand-drawn and and then if I wanted to create a floor line I can use a straight edge of some kind And you can see we're just doing that sets the whole plan. 
and you could certainly do one color down here that would just look like carpet but let's say you're uh, game to try a couple of lines then with a little bit of perspective you just kind of angle them out a little bit as you go across okay it doesn't have to be that accurate to give you the look of it so we'll just fast forward a bit of this and I'll try a little bit different color scheme Let's just add a little bit more shadowing here. I'm going to paint a little bit more on this. I'm going to heat it now to dry it quickly. Now that it's dry, I can simply rub away the masking fluid to reveal the white. It rolls up like rubber cement. Okay, so take a look at our little gallery of finished cards.